first of all, again, bro, uh, my name is Big Reed. Uh, I host a night show here in the Bay Area, 99.7 Now. Thank you for jumping on uh, this Zoom call with me today, man. Dude, of course. Thank you for having me. For sure. I've been seeing you everywhere, okay? Uh, and I, I came across you initially on TikTok, and I saw the videos with you on Omegle and, like, just seeing the people, you know, putting smiles on people's face. And, you know, I, I thought that was super dope. I just think the energy that comes from you is, is fire, first of all. Obviously, you're super talented, but just your energy and, like, your positivity, that's above all, bro. I think that's really dope. I just want to give you your flowers, you know? You know, hype you up a little bit as we get this thing started. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Now, let me let me get a little background about you, bro. Like, when did you get started in music? How did you get started? Is this something that you've done your whole life? Yeah. So, um, I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And basically, in my entire, like, life growing up, I've always been into music. And I've always kind of been fascinated by the idea of songs. Yeah. Um, Around like 12 years old, I kind of decided to just write my first song um, out of nowhere. Uh, don't e I wasn't even like around of a lot of people who were like very involved in music at the time. So it was just kind of like one of those. I was inspired by an artist, wrote a song. My parents were kind of like, wait, this is actually not bad. Why don't you keep trying this? Wow. Um, and throughout that, like, I think I just started releasing my own music and like writing songs for myself until around... 15 to 16 year old I learned about songwriters <laughs> and okay. a, a career in songwriting is something possible in Indonesia like arts in general isn't really too like pushed or like taught in like schools so I was always kind of like learning and experimenting everything by myself like listening to like radio stations that played pop hits and everything mm -hmm. so I kind of was inspired by like wow wait the concept of songwriting and songwriters being so involved in an artistry is like I think so cool that I might want to try dive into that and with that in mind I decided to go to college out in LA and study okay. music here with the idea of like let's see what I can gain from here and what what I can experience because it's like it's such like a cool community of like musicians and artists that like I've always kind of seen from like a screen yeah for <laughs> sure I'm yeah. like on the other side of the world and I was always just like I want to see how it's like there and first time coming here was just so cool to work with so many people who are you know so passionate about the same thing um and I honestly had the idea of pursuing a career as a songwriter in mind so much more uh because I was always being trying to be like realistic <laughs> in a way not mm -hmm. to say that I didn't want to have an artistry or pursue an artistry but um with the amount of time that I have in the US, I've always kind of just been like, let's see what I can do logically that makes sense that can help help me get me, like help get me somewhere. Um, and then when 2020 hit, I kind of adapted to TikTok. <laughs> Word, which yeah, absolutely. Opened up this whole platform for like myself as like an artist and as a singer, which I did not expect it to bring me to where I am today. Honestly, all of this is like just so insane. I'm still winging it. I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm doing. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to get crazier, too, for you, man. How, how scary was it leaving home and coming to, you know, to the States, to L.A.? Like, that's L.A. is a crazy place. Like, how, how scary was it for you? It was a mix of emotions, for sure, because I was, like, so excited, but at the same time, so scared because it's like, wow, I'm leaving my home, like, my mm -hmm. family and friends, like, literally on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, facts. But I think that, like, coming here with the intentions of wanting to pursue music really helped me out and you know not getting too homesick as often I still do for sure but I think like just the drive of like chasing a career and trying to see what's possible out here really helped me stay and like continuous with like pursuing a dream <laughs> for sure no that that makes perfect sense when you when you got out here when you started going to school where like with the people around you and I'm not exactly sure how it works down to what school did you go to exactly? I go to Los Angeles College of Music. Okay, awesome. Now is everybody like real collaborative? Does everybody want to work with each other? Everyone wants just just wants to learn, or is it kind of like fifty fifty where there's a group of people that you know you can kind of like connect yourself with, and there's others that are just like doing their own thing. Um, I, I have to say a majority of people that I first met were very just, you know, driven to do their own thing, which I think, mm -hmm. you know, coming into a scene where we have no experience in, like, we're all just like, here's my ideas. Yeah, facts, <laughs> um, for sure. 
and I like throughout time, everybody became so much more collaborative. I have so many like good friends and like, I hope to continuously work with the people that I've made friends with in my college throughout my music mm-hmm. career, as well as their music career. That's awesome. So jumping on TikTok, was it initially like good for you? Did it initially just start taking off or did it take a little while for your videos to start getting traction? It took a while. It took me like a good month. Um, But honestly, what was fun about that whole process was that um, because I didn't have any followers and I wasn't sharing it to anybody I know yet, it was one of those platforms that I was just like, I'm just going to post. I don't care if anyone sees it because I don't even have followers on here yet. Mm. So like a month in, I like, did a cover of I think it was like a duet because I didn't know the duet feature was like an option yet at the time Mm, okay like one of my videos like just did well and I was like whoa like it's been a day and it's at like a thousand likes and I have like no followers on here that's amazing so I like continuously still did like the duet option and one day like one post just like really blew up for me and I was so confused (laughs) because I was just like how does like TikTok work I don't get Mm -hmm. the algorithm you know having used Instagram and it's kind of more of like a for the people that follow you for me, at yeah, least, yeah, or yeah. how it's been for me. So like TikTok's algorithm was just so like surprising to me. And I, because of that, I just saw that as an opportunity of like, wait, maybe I should like just keep posting covers and originals on here to see where it can go. And that's kind of like what I saw as like, an, uh, like a platform that could help me out with opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always kind of just considering it as like a, you know, trying to be a songwriter is already so hard because I'm so new. Um, yeah. Let's see what I can do on the artist side. <laughs> and that's kind of where it all slowly started to shift for me. That's what's up. That's awesome, bro. You've grown like crazy over like the last year from what I've seen, from what I was following. I think I probably started following you like four or five months ago, I think on TikTok and just like the videos and obviously your voice and everything is super dope. And the way you did it, like just posting videos, just randomly continuously doing it. I think that has a lot to do with, uh, you know, your success. I don't understand any algorithm on any platform. I don't know what Same. IG's doing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm even on Facebook sometimes. I don't know what Facebook is. I don't know what none of these people are doing, but uh, I just try to post as much as possible to keep <laughs> it going. And then Omigo, when did that, when did you start deciding to jump on there and just singing to random people? Yeah. So I'm very like on TikTok, like just like constantly scrolling through the For You page, like being mm-hmm. entertained. Uh, I think like around November, I started seeing like Omegle like videos like surfacing. And at the time it was like a bunch of people doing like comedic skits, like on the spot skits on there. That's funny. So so I was kind of like, wait, this is cool. Like, why don't I try to do a singing one? Which I'm sure I wasn't the first to do. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure Mm -hmm. someone else like had the idea first, but I kind of was just like, I want to try that out. Um, The first video I posted, like it just did really well. I wasn't expecting um like the like how big the video got and I decided to do another one and that Mm -hmm. second one like really really blew up for me and uh, I kind of was just like whoa this is actually really cool because I get to interact with all these people who I'm scared of by the way because majority of people on Omegle (laughs) sometimes can be rude yeah yeah, (laughs) I was thinking about that I was like how many times does he do this and someone's just super disrespectful to the point to where you can't play it you know what I mean (laughs) Yeah, most of the time, I just kind of let them say whatever. I try not to take it to heart because, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's literally, like, the, the intention isn't really clear of why they're being rude in the first place. So, yeah. like, I try not to take it to heart and just continue with, like, singing because for me, it's, like, my job here is to entertain you. I'm going to try yeah. that even though you have no intentions of knowing what I'm going to do. Um, so, and, yeah. And maybe they're I, going... Like maybe they're going through something and like you jumping on there and singing, it completely changes whatever their mind state was or however they were feeling. And maybe the next time they go to another person, they're a little bit more polite, you know? Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, like, you know, so many people are like teenagers on there and like we're, you know, Mm -hmm. we're emotional. (laughs) Yeah. So like I I thought of it in a way where like maybe the previous person that they met was just completely rude and they decided to give off the same energy. So like that makes sense. The way I see like myself on social media and on Omegle was kind of like, let me try, you know, just Work. make some days for some people if I can, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad that that kind of has really helped out my brand as well as just been a fun, like interaction, a fun way to interact for me to like new people and reach out to like new audiences, you know? For sure. And one of the things I noticed you doing recently is you're sharing uh, your single, you're too close with people singing it to them. Everyone's loving it. 
I even seen uh, one of the duet, like the duet videos you started off with on TikTok with Tori Kelly, who I've met yeah. a few years ago. Super talented, super dope, you know, going back and forth with you. And I think the song is super fire, bro. Thank you so much. Like, yeah, I, that I, was... <laughs> I heard you singing. I was like, yo, like, let me find this. Found it on Spotify, you know, sent it to, you know, my programmers and everything that takes care of stuff at the radio station. Like, yo, like, this dude is the truth. You know what I mean? So um, putting the song together, like, uh, you, you wrote the song? Mm-hmm. I wrote it with, like, I wrote it uh, with my co-writer. That's what's up. That's super awesome. How did it all come together, man? Like, what was the process like for you? So, like, for me, like, what, like with writing sessions, I always try to make it, like, based on the conversation we have. I, I prefer to always write a song with people, like, in a way that's, like, organic between all of us. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when it's myself, I get to, like, pick what I want to write about. And, like, this is the direction I want to go. But I've always found it more fun to really just get to know everybody in the room, talk about, like, how we, we're doing, how we really feel, and let that, mm-hmm. those conversations lead to a good song, if it turns yeah. out to a good song. And that's kind of how it happened with Year Too Close. We were just talking and like two hours later we finished the entire song that was just like whoa what happened (laughs) because like that was such a good conversation it was such an easy process we all were like like in the on the same wavelength and like you know production wise melodic wise like everything we had like the same concept that we were going for and yeah that's 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 mainly why i ended decided like i need to release this song i think it's like one of the most like organic processes i've had in songwriting and emotionally i was so invested in the story as well mm-hmm. it sounds good too by the way let's put that out there the song it sounds really <laughs> thank good thank you i kind of jumped ahead because i wanted to talk about the song but uh your reaction to tori kelly doing uh, the duet like what was your like when you got the notification like what like what what was those first couple of minutes like for you i couldn't sleep it wasn't the first couple of minutes it was the next day <laughs> I was, okay I was just, like freaking out because like I think I was that day I had like a pretty long day and I was getting really tired around like 8 30 at night I'm a grandpa so. it's okay I feel so you. like as I was about to go to sleep I saw a notification that said Tori Kelly duetted your video and I thought like you know a fan account maybe right like mm-hmm. like so mm-hmm. I decided to click the notification it opened up to the video and I saw Tori Kelly um like next to me like singing my song and I just couldn't make sense of it because she's like one of my biggest inspirations in like music and songwriting um I've been a fan of her like for the longest time so Mm -hmm. to see that happen was like so so weird for me and then when she started singing her like my part I was just like she's singing a song I wrote this is insane I like texted my co-writer and we're like yo she's singing a song we wrote <laughs> we both just couldn't sleep i woke up at 4 a.m because i was still freaking out <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up uh, have you had a chance to talk to her since or uh i mean i know covid's right now so hopefully you guys get a chance to meet in the future yeah we actually did a, a live stream a couple of weeks ago okay and we're just like talking on there we did like my song as well as one of her songs and on the live stream, we talked about hopefully being able to meet in person and like do a session mm-hmm. and everything because I'd love that. I'd love nothing more. Um, so hopefully I get to follow up on with like on her on that with her. <laughs> For sure. As sweet as she is online, she's even sweeter in person. She's like the nicest person ever. You know what I mean? Um, it's, yeah. So what do you what, what are you looking forward to for the rest of the year after everything opens up? I know like at some point though, you want to get on the stage in front of people. I know that's going to be crazy. That's going to be an experience. What are some other other things you want to do before the year's over? I for sure just want to keep like fl- like flushing out songs because that to me is like one of the, my favorite things about music. It's the writing process and the creating process. Um, hopefully when things open up, I get to do shows because there's so many like people that follow me that I've been just keeping in touch with. And I'm like, I hope I get to meet you one day because I really appreciate your support um and yeah just continuously get to know more people and collaborate because i'm i love working with people <laughs> absolutely absolutely look the uh the invitation is there the doors are always open here at 99.7 in the bay like whenever you know this thing actually 
starts to get a little bit back to normal. It seems like we're kind of on the right track right now. So it looks, it, it seems kind of Yeah, cool. I just need this to keep going until yeah, we get right? there. <laughs> yeah, just keep going in this direction. But like I said, the invitation's always open. Uh, once we get everything back to normal, uh, I definitely want to invite you to come out to the Bay to hang out with us, meet some of your fans out here. You know, I got reached out to by a couple of people. One of the uh, homies, her name is Coco. She was like, yo, I got the DM still. She was like, yo, you need to reach out to him. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. I was like, damn, like you're reading my mind. But uh, I want to give her some love in the middle of this conversation so she knows no, I, I acknowledge her that. for that. That would be amazing. Man. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Word, word. Well, uh, I'll let you get back to your day. Uh, I hope to. Uh, I'm going to keep following you, keep showing you love and everything like that. And I look forward to meeting you in the future, bro. Thank you, man. Have a good day. All right, man. Peace out.